Assalamualaikum and welcome back everyone to I Am Brilliance. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to I Am Brilliance where we explore secrets to unlock potentials. Our very goal with this show is basically to dive into the mindsets, insights and ingredients of success of IM's very own high achievers in the field of academic, intellectual and education. But most importantly, we try to invite over people who have significantly contributed to the development of our society through their works. But this week, we have a special edition, just a new spicy twist, because recently, on last Monday, we had a conference, very historic conference on the establishment of Students' Union at IUM. I would be very hyper and quite serious in between moments because we want to get this conversation to our IUM community. Please join me in welcoming our guests, very special guests and beautiful beauties with brains. We have Sister Nur Akila Muhammad Zaki from Students' Representative Council, as well as Sister Farida Hanim Bukhari from Students' Democratic Alliance. Welcome to the show. Welcome. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining Very us lady. and being patient with all the conversation we have before this. Okay. <laughs> this is a very important conversation because we spent a lot of hours on the proposal. Mm -hmm. When I say we, yeah, all of us. And students don't see the behind the scenes process. And as last Monday has passed, mm -hmm we want to still continue with this because there is a lot of work on raising the awareness among our students. Mm -hmm. Let's begin with a fundamental question. Mm -hmm. Why do we even bother to care, to establish and be part of this student union? Why is it even important? Akila, can you share your thoughts? Um, well, um, the main elements are like, the main reason why we are proposing for this student union is basically for student empowerment. That's the whole idea behind it. Because let's face it, like, um, for years, um, the students' movement have been, um, we have like a lot of obstacles in um, doing activities. And for now, SRC, we have our own powers. I mean, we have our own jurisdiction and job scope and everything. But um, the reality is we are always being limited um, by the um, stat, I mean, the HEP, Halaiwar Baja. And because of that, um, we want to have the student union so that we can have more power and by meaning more power we can cater to a lot of the affairs of the students co yeah. comprehensively. Yeah. What do you think about uh, I agree with way. Akila on that but we just like to add on something. Um, it's not just to realise that we actually have the power but to realise that we can do it. You know, mm -hmm. we have the capability as a student um, to go forward and to make decision making, and for a very long time, people have been underestimated, uh, underestimate students. the student power yeah. and uh, the ability on mm -hmm. uh, have opinions on a lot of stuff. So with the current situation that happened when the new government just came in and all of this force, you know, we have uh, undi la fambelas and all <laughs> such thing also yeah. come into place, right? Like just um, trying to make people realize that youth just have so much power, so much potential to change society, I think it's the right time. It's, it's a matter of the time now and when we have it, and Dr. Masli also were very uh, excited to bring it up, I think we should, we should, we should just take the challenge and go for it. Lah. Yes. I remember during the day, there are many like quotable quotes people say, <laughs> like Akila said about if you cannot even trust our students to lead the university, who else do we expect to lead the nation tomorrow? Yeah. And you also begin your presentation with your partner, yeah. saying about we shouldn't be just people who are led back and sit back just smoking their cigarettes, something yeah. like that. Okay, it's a beautiful, <laughs> it's a beautiful beginning because we need to work hard. We have a prime minister, 94 yes. years old, yeah. working hard. Yeah. We also have to go to the direction. Mm -hmm. And I believe that you also realize as we presented the proposals, we will be affecting thousands of lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to begin with our undergraduates, 21,000 students, and this very model, eventually as we establish it, their lives, the student experience, the thousands of ringgit they're going to spend studying here, they will be affected by this whole concept of students' union. Okay. So can you share with us basically your experiences while you're preparing for the proposal, as well as presenting it? What are some unforgettable moments for you? Uh, is it me first, okay. <laughs> um, I'll be honest, like, uh, I think a lot of the hard works were uh, made by my team. Mm -hmm. They put a lot of times into it. I actually come a bit late uh, towards the process um, because of my own personal, I have my own personal uh, responsibility as well. Um, but I know the process was not easy. They have a lot of meetings towards the end. 
But I think uh, if it's my own personal uh, unforgettable moment, right? Yeah. It'll be like a day before it, uh, where w- when we start to present it, uh, and all of the questions uh, from among ourselves start, start to raise, you know, and, and all of this were not raised when the proposal was made. And during the time, then we only start to realize if even us question all of this uh, loopholes, then what else would uh, the other audience would do? Like, the same thing would be in the audience, right? Um, so the night before, I remember like 1 a.m., there's still a few uh, part of the proposal that we can't uh, have a final say on it. But I think um, it's a great experience. Uh, I definitely enjoy. There's a lot of like Arabic quotes that I need to remember as well <laughs> that were given by my teams. Um, but um, kudos to all of the team um, that have tried their very best to propose to it. Uh, yeah. So you felt very strongly about those moments when, among yourselves, mm-hmm. you even wanted to add on to improve. Yeah, exactly. Before. Right. Uh, I think it just shows that everyone really wants the best yeah. when it comes to proposal, and it's just the best when it comes to student union, uh, or, or when it comes to our proposal. But it's just the best for the system. And uh, if even like with that one night, we have so many questions like arose, right? Yes. Uh, we just imagine when this actually being implemented. True. How many yeah. cycles of discussion yeah. should go? How about you, Akila? You must have some our unforgettable experiences. Yes. Um, like for SRC, we have our own team. Like not everyone is involved in the um, main, the proposal making process. Like we have our own team, including Ida Yu is in there. So like um, like some of us are in this w- proposal working committee. So we discuss by ourselves first, and we had a lot of meeting, and then we have to present it to the rest of the members of the council for us to have consent for the proposal. And like I remember, like one of the meetings, like we had to stay in the office until four a.m. Like everyone was so oh, that's a bit worse. Up. <laughs> that was the worst. But we need to do it because like the deadlines and everything, and because everyone was so busy, so we had to stay up. And to finish it, and then like interestingly, we had a similar experience like <laughs> with MBA <laughs> because the night before also we also prepared for the presentations, and then like some of us stayed to like giving questions, and we look back to our proposals and the slide, and we were also questioning like our decisions before this, like wait, why do we have this in the proposal? Like, it shouldn't <laughs> be like this, like, and we saw like all the f- all these flaws, and like it's 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 important actually because like we get to really see like the challenges. Um, in establishing the yeah. student union, like and how we can strengthen it more, and um, for the conference, uh, it was nerve wracking, of course. Like I've never been you speaking, were cool, though. but Very cool. it was okay. nerve wracking. I was I mean, screaming cool. inside. I looked cool outside, but screaming inside. Okay. <laughs> and because like it was the convocation hall, like it's one of the biggest hall in IIUM. Exactly. And like the questions, um, but the questions were that were asked by the audience are really interesting and it was really um, important for us to really look back and like um, like discuss it in a comprehensive manner. Yeah, It's inspiring, I would say, that we come together first at our organizational level yeah. when we discuss about, we have one concept mm-hmm. and those people regardless of which where we come from, so that everyone thing. wants the best. Yeah. We don't get paid doing it we don't even get star points doing it. Yeah. We go beyond because we are planning something yeah. for the generations in the future. Yeah. So please stay tuned when we talk about students' power as well as students' responsibility. After this, we are going to dive deeper into the students' union models. Stay tuned with I Am Brilliance.
Welcome back to I Am Brilliance, where we explore secrets to unlock potentials. This special edition week, we are going to dive into Students' Union, and we have our two beautiful presenters, last time during the conference of Students' Union Establishment. And for the next question, I am inspired by this book by the title of Cognitive Surplus. Basically, the idea that we are ultimately connected these days, mm -hmm. even more so with the existence of artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and all this big data. We have our engineers here, they can explain about that. The whole idea of that is that we have our energy and time, and it's best that we merge our ideas and time mm -hmm. instead of rivaling, because mm -hmm. we have put hours into this. Mm -hmm. And just for your information, apparently after the conference, the juries gave some feedback. And our guests today, they have scored very high. That's why we are inviting you all also to share some significant elements of your student union model. So can you share with us, like, for you, mm -hmm. be it personally or at your organization level, what do you think are the features in the proposed student union model by you, you find significant? Mm -hmm. Well, firstly, I think the underlying philosophy behind it is one of the most important thing um, in the proposal, uh, which is autonomy, accountability, representativeness. You know, all those things are the main reason why we are doing this. Um, apart from that, um, the structure, of course, the structure of the student union will be definitely different from what we are having now. Like, for what we have now is we have SRC, and um, ISLA, even ISLA, which is like the parliament, student parliament, is also under SRC. So basically, we do not have like any other entity, entities that um, cater to students' needs and because yeah. everything under SRC again. So this student union, uh, we have a different structure. There will be three different um, branches of student union. The first one is the executive, the legislative and the judiciary. We have this idea, we, I would take it from the um, concept that we have for uh, the Malaysian government so that um, it's important to have these three branches because we have um, these distinct functions for each of them. So the executive do the all these activities for students, you know, like all this enforcement thing. And the legislative, what they do is they be the check and balance for the executive and they do the policy making and everything. And for the judiciary, um, for them to enforce the law, of course. So I think um, this structure is definitely one of the most significant part of the proposal because it is a huge thing. Because when we do the student union, it's going to be a very radical change because of this structure. And then, um, what can you say? Uh, apart from that is the election commission, I think. Um, the election system will be different also. We are mm -hmm. proposing for e-voting. There will be general seats. So we'll, uh, what, this is what we propose now in our proposal. Um, there will be no longer um, elections um, seats based on kuliah constituency. We are proposing for general seats, meaning like for one candidate, the whole university to need to vote for them, not just the kuliah, because what we want is the participation um, from the, the students way. and the representative must represent all of the students and not just their kuliah. So that is one of the main features that I think is significant in this proposal. Yes, mm -hmm. it's very important for us to be very clear about mm -hmm. the branches yeah. because being the powers inside the Students' Union mm -hmm. as well as these are the people who will become the backbone of making sure it's stable mm -hmm. yeah. as long as they're checking and balancing mm -hmm. one another. Mm -hmm. How about mm -hmm. you, Farida? I think if Akila already um, tackle on the structure and also the mechanism on how the student union would like to be, right? Yes. Uh, uh, I think the best part about the proposal, uh, if you, me, on, on my opinion personally, is on the nature of the organization of my, of our F, of SDA proposal, um, where we very much tackle, tackle on the good governance principle, on the honesty, uh, uh, transparency, accountability, and mm -hmm. also participation, right? And I think this is the part where a lot of students need to understand that uh, how the system work and how the process of election work, the transparency behind it, uh, the election process, where the money goes. I think mm -hmm. all of these things were not being tackled tackle currently, but with all this foundation and principle that we have currently and that we are going to propose uh, in the near future, uh, I think this is the best part of all that everyone uh, should look into. But also adding to that, uh, we also propose on uh, the, the part where we had a lot of people questioning us during the conference is when we propose also this concept of Hikmatu Shuyo. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a concept, uh, literally it means the wisdom of the elderies. 
uh, meaning that we need to take uh, the con the concern of the people that are already in the system, right? Yeah. That are that are already working hard in it, especially the elderies. Uh, by that we mean all those factories and administration that have the experience and knowledge over how the system works. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the time when we propose something like student union and student power, people associate it with something uh, as radical as uh, rebellious, you know, mm -hmm. like, oh, it's our power, we don't need to listen to anyone sure. anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not what we're proposing. Yeah. We are proposing a collective work, mm -hmm. a collaboration, where uh, it's just that the difference now is that students also have a lot of say on it and a lot of decision making were b given to the, to the students instead of the admin, right? Um, but um, it means also here, when we consider the, the concern of the elders, it shows that student union aren't just concerned about themselves, it's not just about the students, but it's a community as a whole. Mm -hmm. It's not something that just for the student, yeah. but it's something that what can the student do and what can the student contribute towards everyone. Yeah. I agree that very much the last one you said about we need to make students realize that at the end of the day, we want to empower ourselves, mm -hmm. but we are only as high as how much we lift other people high. Exactly. Up. Yeah. So we want to serve the society mm -hmm. as well. So the same concept I believe that you also talked about when you said about um, Hikumata Shuyu, that we want to have shared governance because we have many staffs who are, they don't get the post by voting or anything. Mm -hmm. They apply for it with exactly. their CVs. They mm -hmm. have a certain level of competency. Mm -hmm. Can Akila, can you share with us one of also of the elements that I find interesting, the voting system of STV oh, yeah. that you presented mm -hmm. last time? Can you share with us how it works? Yeah. So uh, we we propose for this new system for election, which is the single transferable vote STV. So um, it works differently from the current um, voting system that we have now, because what we have now, for example, like we have the ballot paper, and then there will be candidate A, B, C, and mm -hmm. we we will we were um, choose. We need to choose mm -hmm. like two candidates from it. So we choose one and two, right? So that's it. For, but for this STV system, um, when you receive the ballot paper. Uh, you see have the um, the names of the candidates A, B, C, but then you need um, to rank them w uh, based on your preference. So you need to rank them one, two, three. So when we have this one, two, three, uh, how do we calculate this? All this ranking it has its own merits. So the one, those with the most highest cumulative merits will win. So like it's really fair la, for everyone because sometimes um, you vote for this one person but cumulatively he didn't even get like the whole vote actually so when you vote this by pre preferences like it's more just la, than the previous system and then we also have this reopen nomination um, system that we are also proposing um, how it works is that when you see the ballot paper there will be candidate a b c and then r o n reopen nominations meaning that if you do not prefer any of the candidates you can vote for r o n and if the highest cumulative votes was uh, given to the r o n then we will have an uh, another election for that particular post it's because um you know like some of the candidates then <laughs> apply for the election like some of them, we do not even want them. Like none of us like them. I mean, like probably like the majority of the <laughs> students don't like them, but they don't have any choice. They need to vote. Like if they don't go vote, then that someone else will go to vote for them. So like they need to vote. So um, it's fair because you're giving the chance for people like to not vote also, but in a democracy manner, a more, more democratic manner. And um, when people vote for RON, meaning that they do not. Um, give their trust or uh, they feel that the, the other candidates do not have the competency to lead. So I think um, we think that um, this system is better in terms of fairness and justice. That's mm -hmm. very interesting because we need to make sure that our students and voters actively mm -hmm. make conscious decisions. Yeah. And I think one of the very important feature from mm -hmm. presentation by SDA is that you showed this structure where you want to balance between the university administration mm -hmm. as well as students' union, yeah. held by this one entity called the Senate. Am mm -hmm. I right? Mm -hmm. Can you perhaps share more? So about that? basically, we understand that whenever students make decision, there might be something that the admin do not agree with it, right? And uh, so, where do we discuss this? Yes. That's ini initially the part Understood. because we already agreed on the shared governance just now. So we think. Uh, the only way for you to do that is when, when you have a meeting that have both representatives from students and also 
um, the admin people, mm. right, and mm. the university people. So once they come together, hopefully in Senat is where you solve everything, every disagree disagreement um, that you have within the system. So that's generally the idea behind it. It also, inside the students' union, we have the check and balance hours. Yeah, exactly. But outside the union, the road balance, is, mm -hmm. that's yeah. very important. That, that is among the things that the juries also give we in their feedback. We also like to, like, whenever uh, we have a SPAC meeting, uh, in our proposal, we, we uh, propose that every SPAC meeting will have a representative of mm. students as well mm -hmm. um, to serve as a check and balance. Lah. So, student will cater to whatever interest that they have. Mm -hmm. And if any decision were, like, differing to whatever they want, then at least we have a uh, student there that are going to voice out the concern. Mm -hmm. um, so that's very good. That's very much it. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think everyone, not only just the three of us, but as well as the whole team of students who contributed to this proposal, that we we are not even like specialized in constructing a new organization, yeah. but we put in our effort. Exactly. And I believe there are things we want to improve. Mm -hmm. Like very briefly, what do you think perhaps one thing that you learn after the presentation, like, oh, this is the part we could do better. Like, if, if there, is there anything? Uh, <laughs> what exactly? <laughs> uh, I think um, if you understanding that students also have their own responsibilities mm -hmm. when it comes to studies and all. Yeah. So where do we balance that? True. Because we want to make sure that uh, we, we deliver our best in uh, with all these powers that we're given. But at the same time, student uh, that, that's also the question that people have, right? Why 3.0, yeah. uh, CGPA and, and such. I thought about it all <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Why do we need like CGPA of 3.0 and etc. cetera? Uh, exactly, because we think that the, the main power here is how do we distribute uh, these responsibilities so that student, despite of serving their best to this um, student union, they wouldn't neglect whatever uh, uh, responsibilities that they initially have when it so comes to their studies. We have a question about students' responsibility in balancing their also aim, purpose groups. of coming here mm -hmm. to get their education. Mm -hmm. How about you, Akila? Um, to answer that question, I, feel, I think um, for me it's readiness, like our own readiness, mm. because um, it's a huge thing. <laughs> like student union with, with great power comes great responsibility. So like the thing that is the main concern behind this, all of this is the, our readiness, especially like those who are holding positions in the student union, because yeah. the system is great, but the people in the system must be better, must be greater than that. So um, trainings, um, for these student union officers is important. Like I they need to be trained very well mm -hmm. before, before, prior, during, and probably post student union. Yes. Because to to ensure that the system will go well, and you know if it's not, then it will be like some <laughs> CSI you know because like it's a huge thing. So the people who is running for the student union um, must be adequate enough mm -hmm. to hold the positions and like run the system. So readiness and our sense of responsibility. So that can be, yeah. that can because be I combined, feel like yeah. exactly. Yeah. I feel like it's a wake up call for me as well. Like personally, before this, it's very easy to become spectators, just come to a place and sit back and just watch things. Yeah. But when it involves all of us, all students, when it involves our consciousness and awareness, mm -hmm. that's why we need to be responsible and prepare ourselves so that we are ready. Mm -hmm. Please stay tuned with I am brilliance and we'll come back after this.
Welcome back to I Am Brilliant. So we explore secrets to unlock potentials. And this time we are talking about the future of I Am. I thought that I, I didn't care, but I realized that when we are educated, like one time my friend even educated me about SRC, then I started to care. And it's our collective responsibility, <laughs> not just the presenters. Yes. So the very question that we ask is I Am Ready for Students Union. The thing about being ready, you know, there are things that we are only ready when we do it. Exactly. What is your opinion <laughs> about that? Can you share with us? Are we ready or not? And why? Um, well, firstly, um, for the administrations, uh, I can mm. say what I can see lah, because I'm already in the SRC. The administrations are pretty ready for that. I mean, like, even the rector, he was <laughs> like, that does it. Uh, he says once, like, um, when he mentioned about student union to the at the answer right he was like do it like just as easy as that like do it you know just do it again yeah. and then um even uh, dr zul is very like with some um, a very um into this very passionate about this so the whole office um is helping us to get ready for student union Th this is for the administrations lah and like for student leaders we can see like a lot of them are really much like, passionate also about this even the kbs they sent their proposal mm -hmm. mrc sent their proposal their own proposal for student union so the student leaders who are already on the sis in the system um they know what's going on and probably like some of them are uh when excited to be what uh, to be a part of student union so for this group of people they are very aware about it but for the other students, like those who are not evo involved in society works or anything, do, or those who are in society but not like, like um, society young, directly involved with student mm -hmm. union, I can say like they are not really aware about this. Mm -hmm. So um, that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty sad. <laughs> that's pretty unfortunate yes. and worrying, of course, because it's a hu it's a huge thing. A student unit is gonna affect like all of us. Mm -hmm. So they need to know like what they're getting into and what will be coming to them. So that's why awareness program must be done continuously from now until like um, September, um, because that's when the student unit election will happen. And even after the election this whole awareness and like this education program must be done for them to really understand what is student union and how they can they contribute um to the system yeah so the whole administration of our university in this new era of new leadership i would say <laughs> yeah, they're very leadership. supportive and one thing is to grab this opportunity i remember even sadia shared yeah. they went to this research deputy rector deputy rector's research, of research yeah. Yeah. Something there's the end, I didn't remember. But he was saying about this is the time. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you also said, for example, we even have some mm -hmm. societies or student leaders who are not aware particularly of it, aware yeah. of this. Mm -hmm. And when we see a problem, like Akila said, it's actually an opportunity mm -hmm. to do something, like mm -hmm. raise the awareness. Mm -hmm. yeah. Perhaps in this how many months we are left with. Mm -hmm. How about you, Farida? I think we were born ready. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's like a tagline. Yeah. Well, like, uh, I think um, Ida, you already mentioned it in her speech, right? Like, so there's something that um, only when the the responsibility were given upon you, then you'll be ready. Yeah. Uh, I think to interpret the words ready, uh, it need to be, you cannot uh, synony synonymize it with um, perfect. Yeah. It wouldn't be perfect. Yes. It will be uh, through a lot of phase. Uh, there's gonna be the first phase where yeah. it's gonna be a lot of chaos first. Yes. Like, where do we balance? Where do these people? What, what is the uh, job scope of this admin? And what do we, what do students do? Mm -hmm. And then after that, then we can only see the improvement. But if, if we do not start now, yeah. then I think we are way ahead of a yes. lot of countries, right? Yes. Like Indonesia, True. like UK. Uh, these countries that are already way ahead of us. Mm -hmm. So it's not a matter of readiness or not. Mm -hmm. We need to like, yeah. I think, go for it. Um, and when you said a lot of students aren't aware of it, um, I think, uh, yes, it is a concern. But with the current people that already that are already know, like you and you, <laughs> right? <laughs> and you uh, and you. <laughs> <laughs> and them. Um, I think uh, with this uh, s s like small power, and with the power of social media as well, yeah. uh, awareness yeah. is not really that hard for you to, yeah, uh, for you to get right, for you to like reach on people. 
So um, I guess, yeah, we are ready. <laughs> when you mentioned about exactly, we should like jump into it. Yeah. Like we cannot learn swimming if you're taking swimming as a skill. Yeah. We cannot learn un until we like yeah, take on it. The, on the <laughs> not to blindly <laughs> jump though, yeah. but after we have taken the practice yeah. and try to swim. Eventually, yeah. we learn about it. Yeah, you have that. to take the first step into the water first, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I want to add on, like, yes. you know, like how we can make awareness of this. We need to get the conversation going because, mm. you know, like the recent plastic bottle thing mm. <laughs> that's happening, like, everyone is talking about it because everyone feels like they are being affected. Like, I. <laughs> like, again, with yes. the people is taking away my right to get clean water, again. <laughs> so, like, you know, everyone's talking about it. <laughs> Twitter, like, people on Twitter is ranging about it on I online, on yes. Facebook. Because, like, water is important to us. Uh, we want that awareness for student union. Mm -hmm. Like, we want that to happen for student union, too. Like, you know, so we need to get the conversation going. Even, like, for your classmates, for your roommates, with your roommates. We, we need to talk about this. Mm -hmm. You know, let's just not keep the conversation between student leaders and with the administrations. Exactly, exactly. Like, everyone, even those who are, like, you know, some who are not involved at all with society, they need to know about this. Mm -hmm. We need to talk with them about this. Yeah, I think students are always like they. If you look at history, right, um, on how in 1970s we are actually very much so students actually have a lot of impact yes. as well, mm -hmm. um, uh, <laughs> in those sense. So uh, I think just like your example, we realize that it's a threatening situation when we know of the right. Yeah. But I think currently students do not know their right, right, yeah. because it was being hampered for so long mm -hmm. um, by the governing power. Um, so if we can tell them the kind of impact that a student in the 1960s have, you know, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of things that the demonstration that they do, to, to, to what point were they willing to go out mm -hmm. when it comes to um, protecting for their right, right? I think if, if students know how much potential that they have, mm -hmm. they will definitely would contribute more to this student union thing. Yeah. Yes, the fact that when we have the, this uproar, when we have this ban, of the selling of the plastic bottle and all. Yeah. That is how we are also affected by other things. Yeah. Mm. Because it's the fact that we are not involved in the policy making process mm. of the university, that we only knew, even the SRC, like at 10 p.m. I was surprised, suddenly we have this policy. So mm. that is one of the examples why we need to prepare ourselves for students' union. Please stay tuned with IOM Billions. <laughs>
All right, guys, we've been talking about is I am ready for Students' Union? And we have talked about students' power, responsibility, and the importance of raising awareness among our community because it is not just the business of the administration, nor the SRC, nor the very active student movement, but all of us. Because it's about our students' experience, and from our education, we build our nation with the education that we get. Mm -hmm. Can you share with us your opinions or suggestions? How it, can we actively increase the awareness among communities just now like you said mm -hmm. we can have also campaigns what do you think i think first of all this would be a very generic answer like social media is a very good thing yeah mm -hmm. um i think currently students are very much focused on their cgpa for mm -hmm. example and, I, and it's, a, it's a very important thing actually but if you look at the skill side of students right uh, they're lacking in um, i don't know if if you do not involve yourself in this kind of um, programs and this kind of administration, then you wouldn't know how to handle all this, all of this thing. And by telling the student that these aren't aren't something that you wouldn't want to miss out, yeah. this is just very much as important as learning the subjects in classes. Uh, uh, I think by t telling them that this is important, and only then, um, uh, I think student would want to go and watch. Or even make it compulsory for a conference of student union, you know, like yeah. UIA should make like a huge conference in CSC. Class cancelled, everyone can Yeah, and what is this? What is yes. your right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we, we Who can you vote for? <laughs> yeah. Because unless everyone knows about it, right? Yeah. Just like you say, like, until me personally, I'm in my first year, I have nothing, uh, like zero idea of what this thing is. Like, just three months ago, I have nothing, no idea about it. But only when I started to know, oh, I have this right, oh, students can do this, or this is how big we are, uh, how empowered we are. So only then I started to want to join all of this thing, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So same goes to my friends. True. If you only tell them that the only way that they can succeed is by having their CGPA, then that will be the only way they, they go. Yeah. But if you can tell them that they also uh, have a power to change other things, even currently, not just when they started working, they will definitely want to venture out in student yes. union as well. Mm -hmm. I agree. This we're living in a world where we can change one's life just by one click. Yeah. Ah. Like the fact that we have this like gold cost. Yeah. Uh, gold cost, I think. Gold yeah, cost. Gold video. cost. Yeah. Gold, co gold cost is the place. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Talk about how when we show one video, someone is inspired, mm -hmm. and imagine perhaps I only have a few hundreds of friends on Facebook, but maybe that one link we share, like if you share the link of this video to your friends, they play it Jeez. and suddenly, oh, so this is the direction of the university mm -hmm. and the power of social media. Yeah. We have to utilize that to our utmost best capability. How about you, Akila? Can you share with us? Um, I think just as much as social media engagements um, is important, I think physical promotion is also important. I think that what we are lacking for now um, we have not seen like posters of student union like all over campus mm. when that is actually like what we need to do. Like everywhere we go, there should be like campaigns on student union. And you know, they say repetition is the mother of knowledge, you know, mm. like if you see it always that you will remember it, of course. So I think like more posters need to be like dispersed out um, around the campus so that they know what is student union, what are the benefits, how their lives will be affected by it. And like I said before about the conversation, that it needs to be done uh, among students and also with lecturers. Mm. I think that lecturers mm. play an important role. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. they are very close with students. They see students every day and we see them every mm. day. So if they even talk about this, if they um, encourage the students to contribute to the student union, I think um, we will have a collective effort from all the IIUM community. Yeah. yeah. Because of the current system, it only involves like few people, right? Yeah. At least few students will yeah. be involved in student body, yeah. not not everyone. Mm -hmm. So if we tell them that student union is impactful because every single one is matter, yeah. then uh, probably the reaction will be different. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think for now, like I think the students feel like it's very exclusive. Yeah, like very the idea of it is yeah. very exclusive for like certain people, for a group of people, yeah. like mm -hmm. those who are involved in society, like mm -hmm. student leaders. But when in fact it's not. Yeah. Like it's for all of us. Like it's not. It should not be just um, a discussion between like a class of people, no. The answers are a wonderful combination. And also like you said, social media oh. mm -hmm. as well as physical promotion mm -hmm. because it goes hand to hand, mm -hmm. hand in hand that we need also to access them because uh, some people need that. For example, you can add on every kulia 
and everywhere some infographic what is students uh, need. Yeah. And we can make a suggestion, like every lecturer, maybe next week, they can <laughs> preach for one second, for one minute, <laughs> what is students <laughs> need. So one very important question that we ask all of our guests mm -hmm. who come to mm -hmm. IAM Brilliance, because we believe that the spirit of this university is a crop mm. to pursue knowledge. And first of all, we have to read with the name of our Lord. Can mm. you share with us the three books which you think everyone should be reading? Um, okay, the first one that we, uh, it's entitled The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. It's a very famous book. Um, it teaches us to like to live the present and like to appreciate and embrace the process mm -hmm. and the journey in our life and follow and for us to follow our hearts. Um, so that's the first book. The second one is Last Kaplangi by Andrea Hirata, oh, also uh, a very famous book and movie. Yes, I like, love movie. Let me tell you, that the book is 100%, 100 times better than the movie. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, the book, like, and like, it tells like a lot of stories that the movie did not cover. Um, and what the book talks about is like for this group of kids in this part of Indonesia where they are very, they are living in poverty, but they are very passionate in education. Yep. So, it really, when I read that, like, I feel so humbled yeah. by their motivation. It's based on a true story, by their motivation to get an education, to learn and, yeah. like, to seek knowledge. So, like, for every mahasiswa, I think they should read the, this book and learn from those kids um, well. in this humble village in Indonesia. And the third book is um, it's called In the Footsteps of the Prophet by Tariq Ramadan. Oh. Also a very famous book. <laughs> um... um it tells the the story of the prophet, his biography. Mm. It's basically like a sirah book lah. But mm. how Tariq Ramadan um, Explain explains his life story is in a way that you feel like I, you feel like this some relatable. You feel so relatable with the prophet, mm. with our prophet, because he's also a human. You know, like of course, like he is. Um, he has he receives like divine um, apa ni, uh, revelations and everything and, and he has a higher um, level than us can but yeah. he's also human and like it tells how Rasulullah approaches things in life that we also encounter it in our life so like um, I really recommend people to read that book um, to know the Prophet um, more okay. Okay. So three books, The Alchemist, Laskar Plangi as well as The Footsteps of a Prophet yeah. Last time, last guest, Rahim Elias as well really? mentioned that book. Yeah, yeah. so See, not you to need to read it, guys. <laughs> Buy in Kinokonia. <laughs> I, <have the> oh. <laughs> I have the song of Last Couple Langi suddenly Lasca replaying Lange, in my head. <laughs> Same. How about you, Farida? Uh, Share okay. with us. Uh, I think the first one is uh, the book that I recently recently read is Asking the Right Questions. Mm. So it basically tackles on um, how when people argue, they really want to see the side of the other person. You know, they, they tend to to argue in a form that they want to defend their own argument and not trying to see the whole bigger picture. Mm, yeah. So this book actually, uh, you know, there's a quote out of it like um, a lot of people tend to just stick with their current belief because they're just too lazy to understand whatever the opposite, the other side have to say. Mm. And this this book also teaches me on how, uh, you know, as a person, the term open-minded is very much important. Mm -hmm. How not to defend your ego mm -hmm. for the betterment of everyone and for the the best decision of something. Uh, I, I, I do not know how to describe it. Like, just go and read it, uh, asking the right question. Um, question. The second one would be A People's History of Malaysia. Mm -hmm. I think this has something to do also with uh, Student Union. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, a People's History of Malaysia is by Syed Hussein Ali. Oh. Uh, so normally when we talk about the history of Malaysia, people would go for um, uh, Tengku Abdul Rahman, Datuk Wan Jaffar. Uh, but this book basically tackles the people's history. You know, all these people are actually working hard, but are not, uh, they, they, don't, they're not they don't get as Unsung much heroes, as recognized yeah. Yeah, heroes. Heroes as other people. Mm -hmm. And this book also tells us on like some of the women that were not being recognized as well. Um, but basically, uh, how everyone actually play a role mm. on making uh, yeah, and making sure that Malaysia got Merdeka, right, mm -hmm. uh, back then. And it wasn't just a few people that we know right now, and the one that we know in history books. There's a lot of, a lot more other people. And people's history is just basically a collective, uh, shows the collective effort of every single one and how we wouldn't come to that kind of impact unless every person uh, played their own role. And the third one is... Um, the power of subconscious mind. Mm. Uh, I think uh, as a student, we of, 
it's, it's just a thing, right? Where a student just like, oh, I'm going to die today. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, this is, this is the worst day of my life. Yeah. Uh, so basically, this book tackles on how when you always say negative things to yourself, mm -hmm. it actually in infects your subconscious mind. Yes. And I just know that. <laughs> like, we think it doesn't, it doesn't really affect, right? But it, it does, actually. So uh, when they say, look in a mirror and like, tell yourself some good stuff about yourself, you might think that w what a w weird thing to do in the morning, right? I just want to go, I just want to get this day finished. But those things actually have a lot of impact on yourself. And this book, even though it wasn't written by a Muslim, but it tickles a lot on how prayers work. Yeah. And how much when, when you pray, it's actually a form of um, positivity, you know, like you're engaging in a positive attitude because you believe in such hope. Mm -hmm. And how actually our whole body, our whole system, and the scientific reason behind it on how prayers actually help you, uh, help your days go better, uh, also were taught in the book. Yes. So definitely this tree. asking the right question. Asking the right question, the a power of the history. subconscious mind, as well as a people a people's history, history of Malaysia. Malaysia. Yeah. It's very important for me to ask all the guests this question, but also because the two of you, it's... We are, I think the women in Malaysia, they are given opportunity, but also after the conference, people are sort of like thanking us for having this women representative mm -hmm. presenting such an important matter mm -hmm. on the SU establishment. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, Nora Kila Zaki from the SRC, as well as Farida Hanim yeah. from the SDA for sharing your time and insights at IUM Brilliance. Because ladies and gentlemen, Students' Union is an independent organization which we aim to empower our students so that as we empower our students, they can give back to our society because in the future, we would need leaders. And knowing about the structure, the philosophy, all about Students' Union is not just the responsibility of the few, but all of us. So if you're watching this, do share with your friends. In fact, it's time for us to Google about the books as well as videos, more on this. It begins with us, the students. It's no more waiting for the administration telling us what to do. So thank you for joining us. And do follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Face. And did I mention anything? YouTube, <laughs> definitely YouTube. Like subscribe on our YouTube, IAM TV. And we will see you in the next episodes, inshallah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.